and welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are so excited to be introducing our new dies, Stitched Teapot and also our Stitched Teacup. These dies are so cute and so much fun and they work great on their own and great together. So let's go ahead and check them out. First, we're gonna take a look at the stitched teapot, and this teapot is so adorable. You have the teapot, of course, and then these items that you could layer or not. So we have the lid and the little spout and the handle, and of course, a smiley face too. We have the tea bag and the string for the tea bag and this cute stitched heart that you can die cut from it. We have an adorable flower and a little flower center too. We have the little top, the little knob for the top lid of the teapot. We have the little end of the tea bag there and then some rosy cheeks if you decide to add the smiley face to the teapot. Pot. The little stitched tart is so cute and this is what it looks like when you cut it from the tea bag. Although I think I'm going to use this stitch tart on a lot of different projects. So you'll just lay it right up in the center, run it through the die cut machine and now you have that beautiful stitch detail that really makes it look like a cute little tea bag. Now you can use the teapot plain just like it is there or you can layer these pieces over top. And one of the reasons I love to layer the pieces is that I love the look of this kind of like a two-toned teapot. So we're gonna add the lid and the knob for the lid. We'll add the spout and the handle. Next, we'll add the center to that flower, and this flower is so cute. And you can decorate the teapot with it, which gives it this really great vintage vibe that I really love. Now you'll see there's a little rectangle and a rectangle with a heart cut out. What this is meant to be is the end of the tea bag string where normally like there's a cute little quote or something for your tea. In this case we have this adorable little heart so you can use it plain or you can layer the one with the heart cut out on top and it's so cute. And then you can just tuck that string right into the tea bag and it looks absolutely adorable. This stitch teapot die also comes with a smiley face, which is a really fun way to get a different, more cutesy look out of this teapot. So we're gonna line up that smiley face die right in the center, run it through the die cut machine, and now it's got this adorable little smiley face. And how cute is that? It reminds me of Beauty and the Beast. I just think it's so sweet. And then of course we have the little rosy cheeks that you can add to it too for a really fun and happy feel. Next, we're gonna take a look at this stitch teacup, and oh my goodness, I love this little teacup. And the die includes a teacup, of course. We also have this little oval that you layer behind to fill in your tea or coffee. We have a little plate and a handle, a flower and a flower center, the words Miss Adorable Little Sugar Cube. We also have a teaspoon, and then some rosy cheeks and two different styles of smiley faces. And you can take those smiley faces and layer them right into the center of the cup and get two cute little different smiley face looks that are absolutely adorable. Now, just like the teapot, you can use the teacup on its own, or you can layer this little handle over top to get that really cute two-tone look. Now, to fill in the coffee or tea, depending on which one you prefer in the background, we're just gonna add some adhesive to the back of the die cut and then layer that oval right in there, and you'll see that that's gonna fill in your teacup. So you could either have it be a darker color, so it almost looked like the shadow of the teacup, or you could fill it with tea or coffee. Then we're gonna layer the teacup and put it on the plate, and you can see how you can add that cute little sugar cube and also the spoon to this look. Just like the teapot, you can use that cute little flower to add a decoration to the teacup, which gives it this really fun vintage vibe that I love. Or of course, you can take out your adorable little smiley faces. And in the teacup, we also have some cute rosy cheeks, which is really nice because you can have the teacup and the teapot match. So I love that these two die sets work great on their own, but oh my goodness, how cute are they together? They're perfectly sized to work together and they look super cute on cards. And we're gonna be showing you in this video how to use them separate and how to use them together and it's going to be so much fun. First up, we're gonna be recreating a gorgeous slimline card by Grace. And we're starting off by die cutting some gold foil metallic cardstock and some beautiful shimmer cardstock in two tones, in this beautiful light blue and also in a white. We're also gonna cut the very top little lid knob there. Of course, I wish I knew the official name for that out of that same gold foil metallic. And then we're gonna layer all of the pieces onto the teapot to get a really cool two-tone look. So now we've got our handle, our spout, and the lid, and then we're gonna add a cute little gold top. Now, Grace took it a step further and she added even more detail by cutting off that very bottom little piece on the teapot out of the one that's cut from gold foil. So we're just gonna trim that little piece off and then we're gonna be able to glue it to the bottom of the teapot to add even more of a detail. And I love that it kind of brings in the gold from the top as well and it makes it look like one of those vintage teapots and teacups that have that little gold foiling on them. I think it's so pretty. 
we're going to be decorating this teapot with flowers and we're going to be using the flowers that are included with the teapot and the teacup but we're also going to kind of shop our stash here and use some flowers from the magic iris spring floral wreath add-on so you can look through your dyes and see what kind of cute flowers you have and mix and match them to create some really cool vintage teapot looks We've die cut these from some shimmer cardstock, some ballet slippers cardstock, and also just plain white cardstock that we're gonna add some color using Copic markers. So I love adding color to die cuts this way. The cool thing is, is they really don't have to be perfect to look really, really amazing. So here you can see we're just kind of scribbling on the green, and then we'll take the lighter marker and just kind of blend it out. And it looks so beautiful, and it really adds to that vintage feel. Another way to add detail with markers is to use a solid color cardstock and then just add a little bit of marker to the bottom, just like we did here. And that's just gonna give it a little bit of a two-tone look without having to color the entire thing in. Now we're gonna start to layer these pieces together. So we're gonna layer the two different size flowers, the one that's from the Stitch Teapot and the one that's from the Stitch Teacup. So I love that you can layer those two together. And then we're just gonna tuck some of the greenery that we found in that spring floral wreath add-on die. And we're just gonna add those behind there. And you can see how you could definitely just take a look at your floral dies or even floral stamps and layer them together to get a really cute look on this teapot. So now that our teapot is all done, we're going to start working on teacups and we're going to do something really cute by stacking the teacups together. So we're going to be die cutting these teacups from a bunch of shimmer cardstock and also that gold foil metallic cardstock too. We're also going to die cut that inner piece that kind of fills your cup in with tea or coffee. We're going to be die cutting that for some coordinating cardstocks and also die cutting the handle. So in this case, instead of making them teacups filled with either tea or coffee, we're actually going to use this piece to kind of be the shadow of the teacup. So what we've done here is chosen some solid color cardstock that doesn't have a shimmer in a coordinating color, and we're going to layer that behind. And you'll see as we flip this teacup over, now it just looks like the inside part of the teacup. So that's two different ways to use this kind of skinny oval dye. You can either use it in brown or even do something fun like a pink tea or a blue tea and layer that in, or you can make it be more like the inner part of the cup, which we're doing here. And we're doing that because these cups are going to be all stacked on top of each other. They're not quite filled with tea or coffee yet. And then we're going to take our little handles here that we've die cut out of some white shimmer cardstock, just like that beautiful teapot so that everything coordinates together. And we're just going to layer those handles on top. And there's something about this two-tone look that I just love. Now to mirror that cool gold effect that we did on the teapot, we're going to do the same thing with the teacup. So we're just going to trim the very bottom of that teacup. And then we're going to layer all of those little gold filled pieces to the bottom of the teacups. Now, because we're going to be stacking some of these teacups, we only have to add the gold foil to the bottom of two of them because we're not going to be seeing the bottom of the other teacups as we stack them. Next, we'll add some tape printer to the back and then we can stack these cute little teacups. And I love that these are stackable. I just think it's absolutely adorable. So we're gonna stack them and make them like a little topsy-turvy. So it really looks like these cute little vintage teacups just stacked up on a shelf. And how cute is that? Oh, I can't take how adorable that looks. Next, we're going to decorate these teacups to match the teapot. So we're going to die cut some flowers from the teacup set and then some cute greenery and tiny little tulips that are out of that same magic iris spring floral wreath. But once again, you could shop your stash and see what kind of greenery and flowers you have to layer them. You could even just make it a little more simple and just layer the flower that's included with the teacup and that would look absolutely gorgeous too. Now to add some fun detail, we're going to add some coloring to the green leaves. And then a little shading to that pink cardstock. And I love doing this because it just adds a little bit of detail and makes your cardstock look a little more special. Next, we'll start to layer all of these die cuts. So we'll add some liquid glue in the center of the flowers and layer on the flower centers. Then we're gonna take that greenery and just kind of trim part of it, just so that it'll fit on the front of the teacup better. And then we're gonna layer those together and then tuck in those cute little pink tulips. Then we'll repeat this method with the other little teacups, decorating them to match and also to match the teapot. So it looks like this cute little vintage set. So we're tucking in those tulips and layering on the flowers and the greenery and it looks just so adorable. It just makes the teacups feel so special. Now this is our cute, fancy vintage teacup set, right? So of course they need little matching saucers. So we're gonna die cut the saucers out of the same color of shimmer cardstock as the pink and the green saucer. And then we're gonna layer them each on the saucer. So the stack of cups and then also the cute little pink teacup. And then here is a look at the complete set.
Now for the rest of the scene, we're gonna start working on the tea bag details. Now we've cut the larger one out of vellum and I usually use this one to be more of a tea bag, but in this case, we're gonna be using it as the decorative piece that as at the end of the string. You know, the one that has the cute little quote, right? So we're gonna be using the larger piece and then this smaller little detail is going to layer right on top, just like that. So I love that you can use that larger rectangular piece there that's cut out of vellum as a tea bag, or it can be the detail at the end of the string too. So now we're gonna add some adhesive to the bottom of that string and tuck that right into the hole that the die cut creates. Then we can add some adhesive on the back and we're gonna add the adhesive right behind that little rectangle so that it hides the adhesive and you don't see any of the adhesive on the vellum. And then we can add that to the teapot. So it's gonna look like there's a tea bag in the teapot and we're steeping some tea that we're gonna pour into those cute little teacups. And so now we can take that string and actually tuck it right into the die cut, right underneath that lid piece that we layered on top. And how cute is that? Oh, I love it. So so much. And then here is a look at the rest of those little teacups with our teapot. Now it's time to start working on the card base and we're gonna be creating a slimline card. So we're gonna be taking out the scallop slimline die. We're gonna die cut some white cardstock and do some ink blending. Now this die cut has that really pretty stitch detail and we're gonna use that as a guide to do some masking. So here we're using some post-it note tape and we're just gonna line up that post-it note tape with those stitch lines. And the cool thing about this is we're gonna be able to ink blend in the center but we're gonna leave the scallops white. So it's gonna leave this nice little border. You'll see when we peel up the tape, it turns out really, really pretty. Next, we're gonna take out some kiddie pool ink and an ink blending brush. And we're going to be inking from the bottom up and it's gonna kind of fade out into nothing. And this is really a nice light turquoise, so it's really cool for doing a technique like this. And right now, we are recreating a card by Grace. So thank you so much, Grace, for making such a beautiful card. It's so much fun to recreate your gorgeous creations. So here you'll see we're adding ink towards the bottom and then letting it kind of go lighter towards the top. And then we're gonna keep building up that ink towards the bottom and then just kind of keep letting it fade out towards the top and just keep working back and forth on it. And then here you can see how we've built up that color and now we can peel the mask away, the post-it note tape, and you can see how pretty that looks where that stitch edging is kind of the edge and then we have that nice white scallop. I just think it looks gorgeous. Now it's time to start building our scene. So we're gonna add some foam squares to the back of the teapot and our stack of teacups. And then the pink teacup is going to be flat against the card in the center just to help build some nice dimension. Now these teacups and teapot are cute on their own, but of course we had to bring in the terrific Day and terrific Day add-on critters because these critters are so cute and they are perfect for using with these die cuts. So I love the mix and match of die cuts on a card with then cute little stamped images. So we went ahead and stamped and colored and die cut all of these cute little characters. We have the hedgehog and the mouse and we're gonna create our own cute little tea party scene. So they're gonna be just kind of sitting around these giant teacups and teapot, it's so sweet and cute. And then we're gonna die cut some more elements. So we're gonna die cut that spoon from some of that same gold metallic foil cardstock. And we're also gonna die cut the sugar cubes out of some pixie dust sparkle cardstock. And I feel like the sugar cubes are just perfect out of that sparkle cardstock. And then we're gonna add the die cut elements to our stamped critters. And I really love this look. One, because the thought of that little bunny holding a giant spoon is just adorable. Horrible. but two, it kind of helps tie our stamped elements into our die cut elements. So there we're gonna have both the hedgehog and the mouse holding the spoon. It's got the little sugar they're gonna be adding into the teacups. And then we're just gonna start filling in the rest of the scene, adding some cute little sugar cubes and some of the birds from the terrific day stamp set too. We'll add some more sugar cubes to help ground the scene there on the left. And then now we're gonna work on the sentiment. So we're gonna be taking out the terrific day stamp set and we're gonna be using the terrific day add-on. And it has this really cute sentiment in there that says that it's time to party. <laughs> so we're gonna take that sentiment and we're gonna curve it. It's a clear stamp so we can curve it, right? Which is so cool. And we're gonna curve it to match the curve of this wavy banner. We're gonna stamp in some clear embossing ink and we're gonna be heat embossing with some gold heat embossing powder. And that's gonna help tie the sentiment into all of those gold metallic elements that we added into the scene. So we'll sprinkle on some embossing powder, top off any of the excess, and then we're gonna take our heat embossing tool and heat it up and we'll have this shiny gold sentiment on our beautiful mermaid cardstock. 
Then we'll take this fun sentiment and we're just gonna tuck that right behind the teacups and teapot there and right where our little birds are. I think it's really cute and it kind of ties the whole scene together. I just love the wavy banner with this whole scene. I just think it looks so pretty. And then last but not least, we need a slimline card base, which is gonna be three and a half by eight and a half. We'll add some tape runner to the back of our cool scalloped panel that we've been working on. And then we'll layer that onto the card base and now this adorable card is all done. I love all of the cute, sweet elements, the beautiful shimmer card stocks in the gold, and then bringing in those terrific day critters just makes the whole card. It's so cute and so much fun. And next up, we are gonna be creating a big request from you guys. This is Megan's platform pop-up. We've had a ton of emails asking lots of questions, and so we're gonna be recreating this gorgeous card here. So we're gonna be starting off with the stitch teapot and the stitch teacup cut out of some mermaid cardstock. And then we're gonna take other elements from these die cut sets and we're gonna die cut them out of white cardstock because we're going to be adding color to white die cuts with Copic markers. And this is a really cool way to get some cool custom colors. And here we're starting off with this beautiful purple. It's so pretty and so much fun. And one of the things I love about adding color to die cuts with markers is that it kind of never looks bad no matter what you do. So here you see I'm kind of being a little bit messy and then blending it out, but it just gives the die cuts cool texture. So I really love doing this because it doesn't take too long, but it gives such a beautiful element to it that I just love. So here we're adding kind of some darkness towards the ends of the handles and then blending out into the light. And then we're just adding a little bit of shading on the plate as well. Now this is the piece that's gonna fill in our teacup and it's gonna be this really pretty pink tea. So we're just gonna shade that. And then we're gonna add some shading to the die cuts cut out of color cardstock just to help bring them into the pieces that we color with markers. So I'm just adding just very, very subtle shading with some really light markers. And you'll see that it just kind of gives a nice three-dimensional element and it's gonna make our hand colored elements just match the plain die cuts a little bit more. Now we can start to layer these pieces together. So I'm gonna add some liquid glue on the back of the die cuts, and then we're gonna layer these pieces on top. So we're gonna add the handle and the spout onto our teapot. We're gonna layer the lid on top. And then for the little knob on the lid, we're gonna add that in purple as well. And then we're gonna work on that cute little teapot, or teacup, excuse me. We're gonna add the handle to that. And then we're gonna add that pink tea to the back. So I'm just gonna add some liquid glue all around the back of the die cut, and then I can just layer that little tea inside Side. And doesn't that look so pretty? Oh, I love it. We're gonna add a little bit of glue to the very bottom of the teacup and then we can add it into the plate. So next up, we're gonna start with some more floral decorations for these teapots, cause it's really my favorite way to decorate these guys. And we're gonna be taking out the spring flowers backdrop here. Now, we're gonna be creating this card like Megan because we've had a ton of questions on how Megan created this beauty. But the cool thing about this is, is you can just shop your stash of different die cuts and different flowers. We throw in flower elements to a lot of things. There's a lot of little added stuff. You can just pick things out and see what's gonna work perfect for your card. Any flowers would look just amazing. So now that we have our flowers die cut out of white cardstock, we're gonna be using that same purple combo that we use for the details on the teapot and teacup, and we're gonna color the flowers so that everything is going to match really nicely. And so you'll see I'm adding uh, more darkness towards the center of the flowers and then just blending it out into light. And you definitely don't need to be perfect with this. You can just kind of play around and see how things are gonna look once again, because the more shading and the more unevenness, the more it's really gonna look like these cute little vintage flower elements. So now we're gonna work on the tulips. And for the tulips, I'm using the same pink that I used for the inside of the teacup for the little pink tea that we have. And that way all of the different elements are gonna match really nicely because we've used the same markers. We'll also color those little flower centers as well with a nice little golden yellow. Now for the leaves for this, Megan used the leaves out of our Magic Iris Fall Leaves background. Once again, any leaves would look great, but these are the leaves that she used and they're really cute and really match nicely with those flowers. And so now we're gonna take some green markers and add some details to these as well. And there you can see, once again, I'm really being messy with how I kind of blob on my darker marker and then blend it out with the light. And don't they just look gorgeous? I just love them. For Megan's tulip elements, she took the spring flowers backdrop and she actually trimmed out some of these tulip elements. So I'm just taking my scissors and just trimming right along those edges. And I'm just kind of going in a curve so it matches the curve of the leaves or the flowers depending on wherever they're connecting to the backdrop. There you can see once again how I'm just kind of trimming those pieces off. And that's gonna give us these really pretty tulips. We're gonna color in the stems and then we can layer those tulips that we colored over top later. 
One last little flower element that Megan added was these tiny little flowers that are included in our Magic Iris Spring Flowers uh, add-on there. And you can see how cute those little flowers are. And so we're gonna go ahead and add this nice light blue color to those flowers. And we're also gonna color in the little flower centers and yellow as well. And these are just gonna be a little extra element that we'll add onto our teapots and scene as we start to create them. Now that our elements are all colored, we can start to layer them together. I always like to add my liquid glue to the center of the flower and then just drop that little flower center right on top. And oh my gosh, I just love the look of purple and yellow together. I just think it's so pretty. I wish these flowers were real or this teacup was real in real life because it's so pretty. Then we're gonna layer those tulips over top of those tulip pieces that we cut out of the backdrop, which is super cute. And then now we're gonna start to layer these different elements. So we're gonna take one of those little clusters of leaves and we're gonna layer that behind the larger purple flower. We'll add some tape runner to the back of the elements and start to layer them together. Now remember those tulips, we cut those out of the backdrops. So there's some parts that are kind of cut in perfectly because I hand cut them with my scissors. So anywhere where it didn't look quite right, I just covered it up with a flower and that's gonna make it look perfect. So I either use the leaves or the flowers or these tiny little flowers to cover up any of my cutting imperfections. So there we have that tiny little blue flower and we're gonna drop in that little flower center. And those little tiny blue flowers to me kind of make the whole thing, it's just so cute and sweet. And by layering all of the different elements of behind or in front of each other, it really makes it look like this gorgeous, like hand-painted teapot. Now we want to have our teacup match the teapot. So we're gonna do a pretty similar design there. We're gonna take the flower, it's the smaller flower, we're gonna layer that cluster of leaves. And then we're also going to layer some cute little tulips behind it as well. So I'm gonna add some liquid glue on the back and then layer that with that cute little tulip and then just hold that in place while it dries. And then we're gonna add the tiny little blue flower there in the corner. And once again, I just love that tiny blue flower. And I love that it brings the design from both the teapot and the teacup in together. And oh my goodness, how gorgeous are these? I can't tell you guys how much fun it is to recreate a Megan card. And if you guys recreate this teapot and teacup, make sure to share it with us because they're so gorgeous. Now, the other really cool thing that Megan did is she incorporated that teacup and teapot onto a platform pop-up. So here I have my platform pop-up die and we're gonna be die cutting some of the flower market paper and we're gonna be die cutting two of those pieces. And then we're gonna fold along all the score lines that the die creates for us. And if you've never made a platform pop-up before, make sure to check out the intro video. We'll link it in the description below. And then we're gonna continue on with the second piece. So again, we're gonna fold along all those score lines that the die has created for us. Now we're going to be doing something that's a little bit different with this platform pop-up than we normally do. And we're not going to actually be putting any T-shaped pieces into those two little slots. So you'll see what I'm doing in just a second. So we're going to add some tape to those two tabs there, and then we're gonna flip these pieces over to look at the inside, which is our little floral part here. Now we're not putting a T-shaped piece in there. So you're gonna skip that part of putting a platform pop-up together. You're gonna fold along that second big score line. You're gonna tuck the tab under and just attach that down. So we're skipping that T-shaped piece part completely. So we're gonna repeat the same thing. We're gonna peel up that liner paper. We're gonna fold along that second big score line. We'll tuck the tab under and then just attach it to the platform pop-up, making these two kind of three-dimensional pieces. Now we are gonna take out one T-shaped piece. This is gonna be the center piece. So this part's gonna be the same. We're gonna fold along the score line, cut off at that score line to just shorten the T-shaped piece a little bit. And then we're gonna add a piece of double-sided tape to that T-shaped piece. And we're also going to add some tape here to the one side of the platform pop-up. We'll also add some tape to the two tabs. So once again, all we've done is skip putting the two T-shaped pieces into the slots, but we are gonna put our T-shaped piece in the center. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna peel up that liner paper, and then we're just going to line it up. And we don't have another T-shaped piece to line it up with, so I'm gonna line it up with that slot. I'm just kinda of trying to center it and line it up perfectly. And once I have that done, I can peel up the liner paper on one of those tabs, and we're gonna butt these two pieces up against each other to create one long piece. Once they're nice and even, I can push that tab over and secure these two pieces in place. Then we'll peel up the liner paper on the tape on that left-hand side, and we're gonna fold this whole piece in half so that these two pieces perfectly line up, and we'll push down securing those. And then we have the one piece of tape left on the tab. We're gonna peel that up, and then we'll tuck that tab in and secure the whole thing in together, creating this really cool three-dimensional platform pop-up.
Now, the next part of Megan's card is just one of my favorite parts. So she wanted there to be a doily for the teapot. So she took out a stamp set, which is Giant Easter Messages, and it has a coordinating die that's this really cool lacy oval. And I love this oval because it's great with the stamp set, but it's also really great on its own. And it really does look like a doily. So we're gonna line that up on the platform pop-up. And you'll see there, I'm just kind of trying to see how it's gonna look nice. And now I'm just using a pencil to give myself a guide as to where to trim it. And then we're just gonna trim it off with the paper trimmer. Now you'll see that I'm gonna take this piece and it's actually still gonna be a bit too big, but I didn't wanna trim off too much. So I thought it'd be better to kind of just err on the side of making it a little too big and then trimming it again. So I'm going ahead and just trimming off another piece. And now we can take it and layer and you'll see that it's going to cover up that little slot where normally there would have been another T-shaped piece and it's going to give us a doily look. Now for the second one, the cool thing is I can just line it up with the other half of the die and then just use that as a guide as to where I need to trim. So I'm going to use some tape just to hold it in place and then I'll just line it right up with my paper trimmer and I'll trim off a piece that's the exact same size from the other end of the oval. Then we can go ahead and take these pieces and layer them into the platform pop-up. So not only is it cute because it's a doily with a teapot, but it also is gonna cover up those two slots. And so this is a really cool way to use the platform pop-up with only one element in the center. In this case, we use a doily to cover up those little openings, but you could use just a piece of pattern paper. You could die cut some cute elements or put a heart or something. So there's a lot of cool ways to do this, but I thought this doily idea was just so beautiful. And so so clever. So next up, we've got our T-shaped piece there. What we need to add is a hill. So I went ahead and die cut a stitched hillside with some white cardstock. And we're gonna add some eighth inch tape to the back and very bottom of this piece. And then we can peel up that liner paper and we can attach that into that center T. And this is gonna give us a nice sturdy place to put our teapot. Now the other next cool thing that Megan did is she brought out a really fun die that I hadn't used in a long time and that's our lacy borders. And the lacy borders are really, really cute for the teacup and the teapot. And Shari's gonna use one of these in just a little bit too. And so I went ahead and die cut two of these borders and you'll see that it's a near perfect match for the platform pop-up, which is really, really cool. And so the little kind of dips there in between the scallops happen to line up perfectly with the score line. So I'm gonna take my scoring board here and I'm just gonna line it up on the scoring board and add a little score line on either side of that so that it's gonna match up with the folds of the platform pop-up. And I'm gonna do that on both of these pieces. And then here you can see as I fold along those lines that it's gonna match up really nicely with the folds on the platform pop-up. That way we can add this decoration, but the platform pop-up is still gonna move. And there you can see just how cool that is. Now I'm gonna take some more of that eighth inch tape and just add that tape to the back and top of these lacy borders so that it'll be nice and secure. I want some nice strong tape because these pieces are gonna be folding and moving a lot with the platform pop-up. So I'm gonna add one of the lacy borders there on the front, and you'll see when I flip it over that it's a bit longer than the platform pop-up. That's okay, we're gonna trim that with scissors in just a little bit. But I like the idea of it kind of going around to the back and finishing up on the other side. So we're just gonna do the same thing. We'll peel up that liner paper, we're gonna line up those score lines, and you'll see that it's just gonna look really pretty like there's this continuous lace all of the way around the platform pop-up. And then just like we mentioned before, we're gonna go ahead and take some scissors to just trim off the excess. So there you see, I'm just gonna kind of trim right along um, and I'm able to just kind of follow the edge of the die cut that's helping me keep my scissors pretty straight there and I'm just gonna trim that right off. And I just think this is looking so, so cute. And of course, it's ready for our teapot and our teacup. I went ahead and cut and colored another little saucer from the teacup set, and we're gonna layer the teapot onto that just to give it a nice base. Um, and I like the little purple detail at the bottom too. And then I also went ahead and die cut a spoon out of some fog cardstock. And then I'm just gonna take a light gray marker and add some details to this too. We've been adding some shading anytime we had a solid colored cardstock piece. So I wanna make sure that this spoon kind of matches the rest of the elements. And then for the little sugar cube, I cut it out of the pixie dust cardstock because honestly, I think that's the only way I could ever cut that sugar cube. I think it just looks so cute being all glittery and sugary looking. So we're gonna layer that little sugar cube onto our little teacup there. And I'm not gonna layer the spoon quite yet. We're gonna layer that as we add it onto the platform pop-up. 
Next, I die cut one of the stitch squares that's included in the platform pop-up die out of some chocolate bar cardstock. We're going to prep that with an anti-static powder tool and we're going to stamp a sentiment from the Terrific Day stamp set. So all the sentiments in that set are perfect for using with the stitch teapot and the stitch teacup. So we're going to stamp that in some nice sticky clear embossing ink and then we're going to sprinkle on some white heat embossing powder and then we're going to heat that up with our heat tool so that it's a nice bright white shiny sentiment. Now we can start adding our elements to the platform pop-up. So I'm going to add some nice strong double-sided tape to the bottom of the plate, the back of it, of the teapot. And then we'll just peel that up and we're going to attach that right on to that hill there. And you'll see that it's just a perfect fit. And I love that you can add the teapot onto the platform pop-up and it can still close shut perfectly. Then we're going to layer our little sentiment square on to the front of the platform pop-up and we're going to layer that cute little teacup right there. Then we're going to add that spoon that we colored earlier and also some more of those tiny little blue flowers. Now you'll see there on the left that I have the cute little tea bag from this set, but I never really found a good way to incorporate it onto the card. In Megan's card, she had the tea bag in the card because she left a little more room in her floral design on the teapot. So that looks really cute that way. And you guys can check out her card to see how she did it. Or in this case, I left mine a little bit more simple without the tea bag. So both ways are really, really awesome, and Megan's is gorgeous. You definitely have to check it out. And now here it is in action. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. Can you imagine when someone gets this in the mail? It's just gonna make them smile. So you just push up from the bottom and you have this beautiful, beautiful teapot with the gorgeous flowers on it. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. It's so much fun to color all of those die cut elements and to put such a large element in the platform pop-up but still have it work and look so beautiful. This is so much fun. So thank you so much, Megan, for this card. And next up, Shari is gonna be recreating a really, really cute teacup card that is just so much fun. So take it away, Shari. For my card today, I'm recreating a card made by Kelly using the stitched teacup die set. And I'm also going to be using some pattern paper from the flower market petite paper pack. So I will be changing up the design that she created just a little bit. I'm making a patterned paper teacup which I just think is adorable and I'm going to use a little bit of tumbled glass ink and a blending brush to just kind of give it a shadow along the bottom and define that edge. Then I'm going to take one of the little smiley faces included in the die set and I'm going to cut out this cute little face from my teacup. So I'm just lining that up in the center and then I'll hold it in place with a little bit of washi tape. Now to start to layer the pieces together, I have a piece of craft cardstock cut with that oval that fills in the T. I also cut the handle from some mermaid cardstock and I'm just layering that over top. So it matches in color, but that is solid. And then I have just a scrap piece of storm cloud cardstock that I will layer behind the cute little face that I cut. There's also a die that cuts out the cute little cheeks, so I've got some of those cut from some ballet slipper cardstock. And then for the saucer, I just cut that from guava cardstock. And I'll just go ahead and add my little teacup to the saucer. How cute is this cute little teacup? I also cut the little daisies from the set out and Kelly had layered the daisies together so you get this really full look of the flower. So I'm just layering those just two together with a little dot of glue in the middle and then I'm just shifting the petals so that they're in between the ones behind. I'm also going to add some centers to these little daisies. This is cut from some sunflower cardstock. And then I'll just set those aside and start to assemble my card. So I've cut the background yellow pattern paper piece with a stitch rectangle. I've also cut a white panel. And then I use that same stitch rectangle that I cut the white panel with to cut a piece of scrap ballet slipper pink cardstock. And I'm using the largest of the lacy border dies to cut that really fancy edge. And it looks like the edge of a fancy tablecloth. So I'm just adding some liquid glue and then I'll just layer this on top of that white rectangle, leaving some white at the bottom so you can see that nice fancy edge. And then white at the top where my teacup and my sentiment will go. And I'm using a sentiment from the Terrific Day set that's sending 
you positivity. And I had actually cut mine for a previous project, so I was just assembling it back together into a line. And I've picked that up with my block, and I'll stamp this across the top with some guava ink, which is going to match that little teacup saucer just perfectly. I'm going to go ahead and add my teacup to this panel, and then I can decorate around it. So I am going to do a little stamping of the little steam swirls from the Terrific Day stamp set. I'm stamping those in manatee ink and I did cut out a little bit of my video where I masked off the cup to stamp that shorter one because it got really dark outside and my lighting got really weird. So now that I have that done, I can start to decorate around my teacup. I have this spoon cut from some narwhal cardstock. I also have that sugar cube that's just cut from white. And then I can start to add my little daisies around. Now I did want to dress up this tablecloth just a little bit more. So I pulled out that border that's from the picket fence border. It gives you that nice just straight piece with some stitching detail. I cut that from mermaid cardstock so it matches my teacup and I'm just layering it across the bottom. So my little tablecloth looks like it has a border of that mermaid color all the way around. And then I can just trim off those ends. I'm also going to add some pops of that guava to tie that color back in. So I'm using that smallest heart from the Hearts and Scars with Skinny Tag set. And I've cut some of those smallest hearts from guava. And I'll just sprinkle those around. And once I have them placed where I want, I just pick them up, add a little dot of glue, and then drop them back down. And I just think that this really fills the card nicely and also brings in that darker pink a bit more. I'm going to go ahead and add that yellow pattern piece to my card base. And then before I add the panel with my teacup, I thought it would be fun to pull in a little bit of twine. And so I've just got some twine that matches that mermaid cardstock. This is the aquamarine twine. I've just wrapped it around and I'm gonna tie a bow kind of in this sort of empty area below the spoon and between those two daisies. Once I get my bow kind of situated the way I want, I'll just trim off those long ends. And then I'm also going to add a glue dot underneath the bow to hold it in place. Now I've added some foam tape all over the back of this panel. You can see that I avoided that string. It's just gonna run between those two pieces of tape. And now I can add this whole decorated panel to my card base. And of course, nothing's complete without a little bit of glitter. So I'm adding some stardust stickles to the sugar cube, which I think makes it really fun and look like sugar. I also added it to the center of the flowers and the little tiny hearts. And then here is my finished card inspired by Kelly's Stitch Teacup card. And I just think it is so adorable. I just love how you die cut the teacup from pattern paper. It's such a cute way to add detail to both the teacup and the teapot. And next up, we have some incredible cards by the design team. And first up, this card by Elena is so stunning. And I love that she brought back the strawberry patch die and used it to decorate her teapot. How sweet is that? I love that Audrey used some blue gingham paper and sunflowers to decorate her teapot. It's so sweet and cute, and I love that she shows us that the teapot and the teacup are a perfect match on a card. We were all talking about Maureen's card here at Lawn Fawn headquarters when we saw it. How cute is it? Oh my gosh, I love that she was inspired by Beauty and the Beast to make such a sweet card. Now here is that card by Megan that was a big favorite of you guys. It is so gorgeous. It was so much fun to create. And here you can see how she added the extra element of the tea bag and some more decorations to the doily and the flowers on the side too. So there's a lot of ways to take that beautiful idea and make it your own. I just love the teapot and the teacup with the cute little smiley faces on them. It just makes me smile. And this card by Elise is so gorgeous. And I love how she used the flower market papers. And so did Kara. And these teapots and teacups look so cute cut out of that pattern paper. 
I love how Yanea used an actual doily on her card. How cute and clever is that? I can't wait to try something like this, and I love that gingham paper used almost like a tablecloth. This is the card by Grace that inspired us to make ours today, and this card is just so gorgeous, Grace. And then here is my card that inspired Shari to make hers. I just love the look of the teacup and the pattern paper for this card. It's so cute and sweet. I just love how Callie also stacked her teacups and then added the different styles of faces to them. It just makes me smile. And then this card by Lynette is so pretty. It has that purple and yellow combo I was talking about that I think is so gorgeous. I just love it so much. And then here, this card by Letitia is so fun and I, she used my favorite sentiment, which is the bestie one. I love how she added flowers into the teacup. Oh, just gorgeous. So we cannot wait to see what you guys create with both the teapot and the teacup. So make sure to share it with us. Thank you so much for watching today and I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye.